Alright guys, welcome to your 50 second tutorial, and in the last tutorial, we learned pretty much how to create number objects, and all we did is print it out on the screen. Now I already deleted my NS log statement because we won't be needing it for this tutorial, but what we didn't really learn is why would we even need to create number objects ever? I mean, all we did is print them out on the screen. I mean, we've been doing that since tutorial number one, so what's even the point of learning this stuff? Well the beauty of a number of objects is you can call methods built-in methods that we don't even have to build on these number of objects and they can make your life a lot easier when comparing numbers check this out not even the same type you don't even have to limit yourself to comparing two integers or two floats or two doubles you can compare an integer to a float so how cool is that so let's go ahead and begin let's typing some code so let's go ahead and make an if statement and let's go ahead to test if one number is equal to another number but unlike before we can just put if int x equals equals int y we can go ahead and compare two different number types so remember we have two objects bucky int which is an integer of 100 and bucky float which is like 145 and some change so let's go ahead and write if and remember this is a method it's gonna return either yes or no so Bucky int in the method remember this is built in we don't have to make this at all is equal to number and let's go ahead and press right the uh, right arrow just to uh, keep all that and now you say is your parameter what you want to test if it's equal to so Bucky float so it really doesn't matter uh, what number you put first because you're just testing equality I mean if one is equal to two or two is equal to one you're gonna get false both ways so just go ahead and put exactly equal to yes so again this is either gonna return yes or no so if it's equal to the bucky float it's gonna return yes so let's go ahead and just log something out they are equal make sure you put explanation point because this will be a big moment so else um ns log they are not equal this one won't get an explanation point because you know for some reason whenever this first if statement happens I'm always so excited but then it's else and it's like yeah I'm not that excited so no explanation point for you so let's go ahead and build and run this and see what we get we got they are not equal why is this because 100 is not equal to 145 so this works but did it just work because you're trying to compare injured to float what happens if you did this well check this out save it all and bam they are equal so this program can indeed compare integers to floats so it works beautiful so now what else can we can do what else can we can do way too many cans in that sense so anyways let's go ahead and delete this and let's use another common method and that's not only testing quality but you can also test which one is less than and which one is greater than so let's go ahead and this is another method called Bucky and the method is called compare pretty easy and right after obviously you want to write what you want to compare it to Bucky float so if this is equal to and I these are pretty weird stuff that they said this is equal to NS ORDR ordered a ascending just like that so if you get back NS order descending and these are the built-in things compare is built-in and it may return NS ordered ascending if the first number is less so let's go ahead and put first is less um, else second is less it also returns same I think if they're equal to but we'll just make them not equal to let's so let's do 32.20 so right now we should get back when we call the compare method to compare Bucky float and Bucky int we should get back NS ordered ascending which should print out first is less so let's go ahead and build and run this and bam check this out first is less 
Now let's go ahead and change this to 200 and print it out and see what we get. Second is less. So this program is also working beautifully just like we expected. So that is kind of the beauty of creating number objects. You can compare different data types to different data types. And also, we didn't have to write a compare method. We didn't have to write a is equal to number method. Those were built in methods that we were just able to use. Pretty sweet, huh? So that's all I want to teach you for the numbers objects from now. In the next tutorials, we're going to be going over string objects. And trust me, there is a lot, a lot of stuff to go over. So uh, thank you guys for watching. If you want any of this source code, come copy it, put it in my forum, link below. So again, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys later.